Welcome to episode 55 in our series on the surnames of Appalachia and the American South. I just returned from a journey to Switzerland, Italy, and France, so I'm still adjusting to the trip. If I seem a little dazed and confused, I hope you can blame it on jet lag. On today's show, we'll investigate the origins and meanings of eight Appalachian and Southern family names. Our search will take us to England, Scotland, Ireland, France, Scandinavia, and Germany. It promises to be a good show, so I hope you'll join me. Let's get started. Number one, Harlan. Harlan with a D as well. If you have an interest in Appalachia, there's little doubt that you've heard of Harlan County, Kentucky. Because of labor strife and other clan-like behaviors that involve violence, Harlan County has been called Bloody Harlan. Uh, you may have also heard of Harlan County from the FX Network TV show Justified that aired from 2010 to 2015. It's considered to be a neo-western, although it's set in southeastern Kentucky. I don't know how it could be a western. Anyway, the surname originated in North Yorkshire, England, where it identified a person who was living on a land that had more than a few hares, or Peter Rabbits, if you know what I mean. These days, it's a rare name in that part of Great Britain. The surname is found in Northern Ireland, where Harland and Wolf builders constructed ships for the White Star Line and other companies, including the White Star Line's ill-fated Titanic. At the end of the day, I think we're safe in calling Harlan or Harland an English surname. Number two, Buffington. The surname Buffington has a great deal of meaning to those of us who descend from John Joseph Van, Agnes Rutherford, or Walleye, and either of his sons, John or James. James was a plantation owner and chief among the Ch Cherokee of North Georgia and southeastern Tennessee. On February 19, 1809, James and his favorite son, Joseph, who was only about nine years old at the time, were visiting Buffington's Tavern for his dad's few drinks of libation. He was quite the drinker, they say. It was dark outside, so when the door slightly opened, no one was surprised and fully expected someone to step inside, but that didn't happen. Instead of a foot entering the threshold, the gun was pointed through the open space and fired into James Van, killing him in front of his nine-year-old son. Wow. At any rate, the surname Buffington is an English surname, which is an alternate form of Bovington. It's a combination of a personal name Bofa and T-O-N or Ton for a farm village. Neither spelling appears among the traditional surnames of any country outside of England, so by default, Buffington is an Americanized form of the English Bovington. Number three, Shields. Well, folks, I'm old enough to remember when Brooke Shields made mine and most of my male friends' hearts melt. Brooke's six-foot frame and her beauty are impressive, to say the least. In that regard, she kind of reminds me of Mary Queen of Scots. Her surname can be either English or Irish. In Northumberland, England, there was a habitational place called North Shields. There was also a South Shields in Durham, which is just south of Northumberland. These parts of England were heavily settled by Angles, Danes, and some Norwegian Vikings. In Ireland, the Gaelic was anglicized to Shields, so at the end of the day, I think you'd need a paper trail to determine whether your ancestors came from Ireland or England. If you've done a Y chromosome DNA test and your haplogroup is I1M253, it throws more weight on the probability of a Viking English origin, although there were Vikings also in Ireland. Assuming no hanky-panky in the old family tree, of course. Number four, Grant. Aside from the tall drink of water who was named Ginger Grant and who suffered through three years on Gilligan's Island, poor thing, the first Grant to pop into my mind is Ulysses S. Grant. The former president and Civil War general was born just across the Ohio River from Kentucky in Point Pleasant, Ohio. The surname was introduced into Scotland in the 13th century. Grant was originally a Norman surname, but by now it's fully included among other Scottish names that were likewise introduced by the Normans, such as Bruce and so on. Grahams. 
According to George Fraser Black, Grant is a Highland surname, which is a bit odd because the Normans mostly became landed farmers in the lowlands. In addition to Scotland, Grant is found in nearly all the provinces of Ireland. It's best represented in Munster and it's least represented in Connacht. In the surnames of Ireland, McClysett calls Grant a Scottish surname, so take that for what it's worth. Unless your ancestor came from Ulster, you would not be of Scots-Irish descent. That was a plantation era community in Ulster. And there were people like uh, Fritz Huguenots who also became acclimated and associated with that particular community as well. Number five, Emery. Emery or Amory. These forms of, are variants of an old Teutonic Almeric or Almeric. A form of it is also uh, found in Italy as Amerigo. You might recognize that name as belonging to the 15th and 16th century cartographer named Amerigo Vespucci. America is named after him in recognition of his detailed maps of Western Atlantic land masses. Nevertheless, the surname Emery and its related forms are found in England and Ireland, so a paper trail would be needed to determine the origin of your line of Emery. Number six, Luttrell, or Luttrell. Folks, one of the best post-Vietnam era movies about war that I have seen is Lone Survivor, which is based on the disastrous events that befell a team of Navy SEALs in Operation Red Wing back in 2005 in the mountains of Afghanistan. Since the title is a spoiler, I can tell you that there was only one person who survived the operation, and his name was Marcus Luttrell, a hulking fellow from Texas. Also, I must point out that there's a town in Union County, East Tennessee, not too far from my house, that's spelled the same way, but we pronounce it Luttrell. We Southern Appalachia folk have a way of making some syllables sound like ull. You can hear that in how we pronounce Knoxville and Asheville. We say Knoxville and Asheville. The surname originated in Old French as the Otter. Like Shields discussed a few minutes ago, Luttrell can be either Irish or English. It's been in the Dublin area, a region called the Pale, since the 13th century. That's quite a long time. At the end of the day, I think you'll need a paper trail to determine the origin of your line of Luttrell or Luttrell. Number seven, Archer. As one might reasonably guess, the surname Archer arrived in the Isles with Norman soldiers in 1066. It was given to at least one man who specialized in being a bowman. Right now I'm having sort of flashbacks to the movie Braveheart when the commander of the English forces called out Archers to soften up the Scottish resistance. By the way, if anyone knows the origin of bows and arrows, I would love to know about that topic. Native Americans certainly used them and they were using them when they met settlers from the east. It would seem to me that the technology must have been around and shared before our deepest common ancestors separated from each other on the Asian steppe. Like Luttrell, Archer has been in England and Ireland for a millennium. That fact alone tells me that you will need a paper trail to determine the origin of your line of Archer. Number eight, heirs, or heirs. <laughs> Occasionally, Someone requests a surname that's found in my own family tree. This is certainly the case with Ayers. Philadelphia E. Ayers was one of my fourth great grandparents on my mom's side of the family tree, of course. Right off the bat, I need to point out that the established family name E-Y-R-E in Ireland is distinct from these spellings. These spellings appear in the Scottish records back as far as 1281. It was sometimes spelled A-I-R, early on in its existence, written existence that is. Since it appears among medieval Ayrshire records, there's a connection, gotta be, between the surname and the southwest of Scotland. However, I'm not sure which came first, the people or the place. The people were, like the Bruces and the Grants, originally Normans and could have been given the name because they were heirs, H-E-I-R-S, of some sort. It's doubtful that it was given to someone who was full of hot air. Being a Norman name, it's also found in England, but I think it's more associated with Scotland and the region of Ayrshire, a highly fertile farm region in the southwest. 
As I mentioned earlier, the Normans were attracted to farm opportunities in the Scottish lowlands. Well, folks, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If demand warrants it, I'll be back soon with episode 56 of our series on the surnames of Appalachia and the American South. Until then, may the good Lord smile on you and yours. Bye-bye.